Yep. Um, so the seat, yeah, if, if your seat's fine, we can do the steering wheel. Mm -hmm. Steering wheel will move in and out and up and down yeah. like that. Oh, yeah, feels okay. Yep. And I'll just, uh, yeah, I probably should introduce <laughs> introduce you. Yeah. We have the uh, member for Indi, Helen Haynes, in the driver's seat. Um, we're all wearing masks because, uh, yeah, in the last couple of days we've we've had to start wearing masks around here. Mm. But yeah, we're just about to go for a drive in in this electric vehicle around um, Albury Wodonga. Yeah. Hi Dan, it's fantastic to be in this car, and we're going to head up. Uh, to Bellbridge, which is a beautiful little village uh, just a little north of Wodonga. And uh, we'll see the Hume Weir, which is a great big body of water on the Murray River. Fantastic. And uh, an important part of the Murray-Darling Basin. Excellent. Mm. Looking forward to it. Okay, so steering wheel's good, seat's good. Uh, your, are your mirrors, your side mirrors are all good? Looking good. Actually, this one could come down a little yep, bit. Yep, so to do that, we just go mirrors, and it's this one. Oh, yeah. You can go scroll up or down sure. or left and right. Oh, yeah. It just slides oh, yeah, slide it. Don't worry. Oh yeah, gotcha. Perfect. Okay. And this one. Oh, it's still this side, but I'll just change. There we go. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah. All right, lovely. Okay, I feel good. Okay. Um, and this is uh, manual. Mm. Oh, what? <laughs> yeah, that's the only <laughs> manual thing in the car, basically. Um, indicators on this side. So hard down will keep the indicator on. And a soft down will give you three blinks. Mm -hmm. And then on your right hand side, mm. you've got a uh, park reverse neutral drive. So mm -hmm. hard up, we'll put it into reverse. Mm -hmm. So you can try that yep. with a foot on the brake. Yep. And then it brings up the, the camera. Yep, gotcha. And then hard down is uh, into drive. Gotcha. So you're now into drive. Great. And just put my foot on the accelerator. That's it. Okay, look at that. Uh, just turn around, I reckon. Yeah, so we can go in and then reverse, reverse around. Yeah. Uh, half up, yeah. That's it. Yeah, that's it. Do you reach for the gear stick? I did reach Everybody for the gear stick. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody does that. Everybody does that. Yeah, crazy. And yeah. I'm driving an automatic car. Why did I do that? Oh, right. <laughs> it's just natural instinct. Yeah. Turn left onto Phoenix Place. Yeah, I actually went out to the bridge earlier today around the Lake Hume, is it? That's it. And it was absolutely gorgeous out there. Yeah, well, it's a perfect day. So, northeast Victorian weather is that we have um, big frosts in the morning and then sunny days in the afternoon. Yeah. Here we go. How's that feeling? It's feeling perfectly good. Yeah. And really quick takeoff, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. There's no warm-up zone. No, it's a, it's basically as soon as you touch the accelerator, you've got power sh kind of straight away. Now are we set on the on the speed. Uh, yeah, so it's 80, 80 kilometers. Now what it's got, as I was saying, it's got eight cameras around it. Yeah. The cameras actually pick up the speed signs. Okay. So, so it won't let me speed. Uh, it, it will still let you speed, but um, when we're driving in autonomous, it'll set the maximum speed according to the speed limit in that zone. Right. Okay. Yeah. I don't want to get a speeding ticket yet. No, we don't want to get a speeding ticket, but um, yeah, it, you'll always be able to see what speed limit you're at, mm -hmm. just here. I reckon it'd be pretty easy to speed in this car. Uh, it it is, yeah. You need to get you need to get used to it. But when when you've got it in autonomous mode, yeah. it'll it'll just kind of stick to the speed limit, which right. is good. Yeah. So you can see it's picking up cars and everything as they as they come past. Yeah. So this is really the state-of-the-art um, autonomous driving. There's, there's uh, Tesla's really light years ahead of everyone with their um, uh, yeah autonomy. You'll see this 80 kilometer uh, sign will come up on the screen. There it is. Oh yeah, there it is. Yeah. So I reckon you went out the other way today. Did you? Did you come out this road or out the other? I can't remember. I reckon you probably. I think I haven't taken you to the scenic route. Oh okay. But we'll we'll get to the bridge and then it'll yep. be nice. Okay, cool. Um, so when you're feeling comfortable, um, yeah, we had. A, I wouldn't mind uh, having a bit of a chat about some of the 
some of the things that you're currently working on. Well, yeah. well f first of all, um, I wanted to ask about the your independent campaign here yeah. and the the voices of Indi because oh, I, yeah. I think leading up to the next election, there's quite a few new voices of groups that are popping up. Yeah, so Indi is a, a fascinating electorate and uh, it's a federation seat, so established in 1901. Uh, so it's it's been an original seat in the uh, in the federal parliament, and for most of its history, it's been held in um, held by a major party, and uh, generally either the Liberal Party or or an equivalent thereof in the older days. Um, everything changed in 2013 when, for the very first time, uh, the sitting member of parliament, who was a Liberal Party person, um, lost her seat to an independent and that was Cathy McGowan and uh, that happened for a reason and it happened because the people of Indi were uh, pretty tired of feeling taken for granted. Mm -hmm. They really felt that, or we really felt that um, the major parties didn't see us, uh, they didn't understand what it truly meant to be a rural and regional Australian and didn't represent the issues that were of concern to us. So a group of people got together, led by a community organisation called mm -hmm. Voices for Indi, who uh, first met in the uh, back room of the Wangaratta Library wow. and said, hey, I reckon we could do democracy a bit better than huh. this. And uh, they then kick-started a whole lot of community conversations around kitchen tables mm -hmm. and uh, asked people, what is it that you'd like to see in your local representative? And what are the issues that matter to you? What do you love about living around here? Um, talk, and people talked, and uh, then they started uh, voting with their feet, and they voted to see something different. And so Kathy was elected in 2013, and mm -hmm. that really, really turned, uh, turned things around. Um, so for the first time, a woman independent in a regional seat sitting in the House of Reps, and then after two terms, Cathy said, uh, okay, I've done my bit, time to pass the baton on, and um, I put my hand up to to be an independent candidate, backed by the people again. Wow. Yeah. And uh, yeah, we made history again in 2019, so I became the very first independent to follow an independent. Wow. Generally, generally speaking, it's a... In, in Australia? In Australia, wow, federal history, go. it's never happened before. So yeah, that's we're really proud of how we get involved with our democracy here. Yeah, yeah, and that's and that's a, like a true a true grassroots uh, yeah. movement, really. Yeah, it was on. Uh, you know, we had uh, in 2019 when I was elected, we had 1,700 people, everyday people living in Indi, mm -hmm. signed up to a set of values about what they wanted to see in their candidate and in their democracy, and they were out on the ground, knocking on doors, yeah. raising money, lots of little donations, and uh, on election day, nine all the booths wow. and uh, people having fun, people talking about the issues that matter and uh, in Indi the issues that really matter to people were integrity in politics, honesty, mm -hmm. transparency, fairness, uh, climate action. People wanted to see real practical action uh, on our warming, warming climate. Yep. Um, we're a farming community in lots of places around here and the farmers saying hey the seasons are really changing we need to we need to take notice of this and likewise uh, people in small communities saying um, there's a real opportunity here with climate to to really harness renewable energy in a way that makes sense and makes money in regional communities and uh, many many people saying uh, federal government needs to do a whole lot better in uh, in healthcare and education for us in regional yep. Australia. So they're the kind of things that I've been really championing and I'm so proud to do so. Yeah, absolutely. And I know also that this region was also um, impacted by the bushfires a couple of years ago. Yeah, very much so. So these hills through here, these beautiful hills that you can see, um, if we go a little bit further north towards Tulangada and Koryong, um, massively impacted by the 2019-2020 uh, Black Summer bushfires. Huge impact. Those communities are still uh, working really hard to recover from that and I've been working closely with them to make sure that they've got the resources, the funding that they need and the support. Like the, the impact of those bushfires is has a long tail. Uh, many, many farmers still fencing their properties, pastures lost, 
uh, livestock, the largest number of livestock was lost up here, people's homes, uh, homes gone and uh, again we know that uh, those bushfires, our, our local firefighters tell us they've never seen anything like yeah. it in their careers so yeah. super important again that these communities, we know that uh, the impact of climate on, uh, on fiercer fiercer, more frequent um, bushfires is a reality for us. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And you've also, you, you're setting up a local power production, um, what, what's the name of it again? Yeah, Sorry. so again, um, lots of people in rural and regional Australia know that right now there's an inevitable transfer to renewable energy. Oh, sorry, can I just hold it there? I just want to show everyone the view yeah. here because it's absolutely spectacular. This is the Hume, Lake Hume, is it? That's right, Hume here. Yeah. Hume we are. Sorry to interrupt you. I That's just, fine. Yeah. Like, this is the Murray River. So this is uh, the Hume Weir and Dartmouth Weir are, are the biggest water catchments on the Murray River. And 50% uh, of all the water that comes into the Murray-Darling Basin comes from Indi. Wow. The groundwater that runs in. So this is a this is an electorate of, of alpine regions, of, of hills and valleys. And uh, in these parts, in the upper catchment, some high rainfall areas. Yeah, wow. That's amazing. Yeah. And so this group is setting up a, a group for... Yeah, so uh, one of the things that's really important uh, to the people of Indi uh, in thinking about a changing climate is um, how do we see the opportunities in this? How do we lower emissions lower our power prices and have better outcomes for the communities that we live in. And again, if we take these small communities that were really impacted by bushfires, for example, Corriol, uh, one of the things that happened is that their power supply was cut off mm. and uh, they were without power for a long time. And without power, uh, they couldn't turn the lights on, obviously. They couldn't operate their mobile phones because the base stations, the mobile phone base stations rely on power as well. Um, the hospital had to be evacuated. There was a huge impact from no power. Mm -hmm. uh, so they've got together with bushfire recovery agencies and with government and uh, worked together to, to now look at a way to create a, have a community battery and to, and to give themselves uh, energy security mm. that they haven't had before. Energy independence. Or that's or... right. That's right. So there's that. But uh, on top of that is... Across Australia, there's around 100, maybe 110, I think now, community energy groups. And these are groups of local people who work together to create or to benefit from uh, from the creation of renewable energy. Mm -hmm. So there's uh, 12 of those groups here in Indi. So a lot of understanding of how energy works and how communities can um, benefit from uh, generating their own power through solar or wind or even hydro. Yeah. And uh, so I've been working really closely with them. Last year during the big lockdown in Victoria, uh, we put out a discussion paper from Indi out to the nation to lots of regional communities to say, talk to us about community energy. Mm -hmm. We received a hundred submissions and then together we wrote uh, a major policy document called the Local Power Plan. And uh, then in February, as a result of that local power plan, um, I introduced legislation to Parliament to to put in place something called the Australian Local Power Agency that would scale up uh, yep. the capacity to create energy in small communities. Okay, fantastic. Mm. Yeah. And the more yeah, the more energy that c communities can um, generate themselves, they actually um, political power comes with that, doesn't it? So your yeah. regional regional areas can actually get more political power at, when they generate their own power and they, and they become more, more independent or uh, more, more um, how do I say, less reliant on power coming in from other, other areas. Well, that's exactly true. Um, it, it also means that they can make money. Hmm. So we know right now that all of the big solar and wind projects, uh, they, they have, they're being built in regional Australia. Mm -hmm. If we were in Germany or in Denmark or in Scotland, most of those would have considerable community ownership. But here in Australia, hardly any do. In Germany, for example, 30% um, of all renewable energy uh, uh, projects are owned by farmers or wow. local communities. Yeah. We don't have the same thing here. And just think about the money that flows into them 
uh, during a drought or times uh, times of, of uh, hardship that they have a reliable source of income yeah. coming from uh, from that wind. Another revenue stream. Yeah, another wind or solar farm that they're a part owner in. So yeah. I want to see that happen in Australia and, and the Australian Local Power Agency bill that I've introduced to Parliament um, would make that happen. Yeah. yeah. Fantastic. Yeah, I, I had heard that in, in places like Denmark there's, yeah, but, community groups they just get together and like buy a couple of massive wind turbines together mm. um, yeah. we've got examples of it here in Australia if you look uh, Hepburn wind uh, down in Hepburn that community own their own um, uh, wind turbines mm -hmm. uh, Denmark in Western Australia similarly we uh, we need some uh, we need some legislation though to enable this to happen at scale mm -hmm. and, and that's the work that I've been doing and the work that I constantly knock on uh, on ministers doors on in the parliament and i'm really pleased that uh there's currently a uh, a parliamentary committee inquiry into my bill to to look at it and Excellent. to make recommendations about whether it should actually be made into legislation so Excellent. that's happening right now that's great and what, what's what's been the hold up till now um on these kind of projects why is australia lagging so much on on energy and yeah. renewable energy like this. I think that no one's actually really brought this to the attention of the government in a um, in a way that uh, has written the legislation to make it happen. So while there's been community energy groups doing incredible work, this is their idea, not mine. Mm -hmm. um, they've been trying to, you know, they've been working in isolation. They haven't had the government behind them. So my job as a representative is to is to take this now to write the legislation take it to government and say hey this yeah, could really is. work and that's what i've done i've worked with yeah. them this is really a people's policy and uh again the cost of it's actually not that much um i'm asking for uh 500 500 million dollars over 10 years to make yeah. this happen we've got renewable energy zones all around australia i want to have community energy hubs in all of them uh, that would enable small community groups to get together and make these projects a reality. Yeah. I also want to see mid-scale energy production where local government can uh, can work with private enterprise. That mm -hmm. needs some underwriting from government. And then I want to see large-scale projects, big wind and solar, uh, owned by private companies, uh, to make an offer to the local community to, to have a share in that. Yeah. yeah. Fantastic. Yeah, and for, I mean, 500 million, it's, it's not a lot. I'm pretty sure that the the government uh, has just given two billion to, for a couple of oil refineries or something like that recently, wasn't it? Yeah, well, of course, whoever's in government gets to choose how they're going to spend the money. Yeah. So um, my job as a representative is to take the ideas and the hopes and uh, and the positive policy contributions from from the area that I represent and say, hey, here's here's another way. Yeah. Here's an alternative. I'm, I'm not just coming to complain. I'm coming with a positive idea. Uh, that would really do something extraordinary for regional Australia. Yeah, fantastic. And uh, how are you enjoying the drive? <laughs> I forgot I was even driving. I'm not <laughs> going very fast because we're on little country roads. Yeah. Where do you want to go, Dan? Do you want me to go back to the? Uh, yeah, we can head back. We can head back. To start heading back to the we office can go up now. This if you want. Hill, yeah, we? we can go up the hill. Yeah. Okay. I, I think I came past a lookout. Up. Is there a lookout just up here? Uh, there is. I think so. Let's have a look. Yeah. How are you, how's the drive feeling? You oh, feel it feels in very control? How is it in the back, Julia? Oh, it's very nice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, it, the vehicle dynamics, um, because the battery, because the, uh, as you can see, the battery's down really low, mm. all the centre of gravity yeah, is very like it low. Holds the road yeah, really holds the road better than any other car, really, yeah. um, which also makes it really safe. And, um, yeah, we've got currently almost got 400 kilometers left on the battery so we've got no problem yeah so back. you know that's the thing here we are out in um in a beautiful rural area of northeast victoria and we're winding through the hills at the back of a little place called Bellbridge, heading towards a gorgeous place called Salangana. and uh out here in rural australia we see great big opportunity to have lots of charging stations along the way and to to give people uh, the invitation to come touring in an electric vehicle um, out on the back roads of, uh, of our region. Up in the Taowong Shire, uh, which is just north from here, Taowong Shire councillors are, are really working hard towards getting electric vehicle charging stations 
along one of the beautiful touring routes, um, the Upper River Road up there, and uh, we want to see charging stations all around the place. Yep. Um, because we know this is the future, and we want to make sure people come to our region yep. and uh, holiday here. So really important to us. Absolutely, and I know um, in Queensland they've they've had quite a good charging network up the coast of Queensland but they didn't have anything inland but recently they've just announced a, a whole um, uh, number of new uh, fast charging stations out in the out in the regions our park is just a P on the end oh yeah just do that oh, look at that that's it that's in don't park. even need a handbrake yeah that's it <laughs> so yeah we're just up at the, a lookout at well, the we moment have a look? yeah we can get out yeah, and have a look sure Oh, sorry, to get out? Yep. Oh, yeah, you got it. Yep. <laughs> oh, we're okay to take it off here? Yeah, we can do yep. that. Once we're outside. Oh, yeah, it's hot, isn't it? Is this where we came this morning? Beth? Yeah, we came past here this morning. With, um, so, yeah. Wow, look at that. Yeah. Gorgeous, isn't it? Yeah, it's absolutely stunning. Yeah, I'm pretty lucky. I've got a beautiful electric. All the ski fields. All these gorgeous mountains, yeah. rivers, it's stunning. I heard that the, there's four times the amount of water in this lake than Sydney Harbour. Mm. Is that right? Mm. When it's when it's, when it's capacity, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so it's it's pretty wonderful. Mm. Yeah, it's stunning. Yeah, so um, I'm really hoping to continue this um, this project with with EVs yeah. and I'm, I'm, I'm trying to what I'm hoping to do is go around Australia and focus on regional towns mm. Mm. and let as many people drive um, this electric vehicle as I can yeah, because often people in regions don't get the chance to drive EVs mm. and so there's a lot of misinformation and a lot of fear mm. out there about EVs. Mm. Um, is it about range? Is it range anxiety? There, there is range anxiety but I think that the, the media and, and certain interest groups have um, stoked that fear or they've, yeah. they've promoted that fear. It's, that fear is unjustified yeah. um, because as I said, my, this car gets 460 kilometres of range I drove it 2,000 kilometres in, in two days mm. and Tesla now has uh, new charging stations that you can get a 500 kilometre charge in 20 minutes. Mm. So you're, you're now limited by how often you need to go take bathroom breaks, not, <laughs> not, by, the, not by the battery. You, you know what I mean? Yeah, so. well, again, we've got uh, Tesla charging stations at some of our beautiful tourist uh, destinations and outside, uh, outside pubs and yeah. places where people would like to stop. So, again, it's... This is this is a draw card, you know. I think um, many people in regional Australia now uh, understand that if they have charging stations, this is another reason why people will get out in the yeah. region. So we're seeing it, you know. We want this to happen. Yeah, absolutely. And I've heard there's there's a couple of guys in Queensland who are about to do a project where they're driving an EV up Queensland. They're industrial designers, and they're going to go t and meet with councillors and mayors. And their um, idea is to create beautiful charging stations in culturally or historically significant areas mm -hmm. in towns mm -hmm. to draw people to certain areas in the town so that while you're charging, you can get out and you can might learn something about the town's history or, or the culture. So it's a whole new way of um, driving and, and getting around yeah. where you don't need to stop at uh, smelly petrol stations. You can actually... Um, integrate part of the journey um, with with charging. So. Yeah, and I think, uh, you know, um, our, our traditional petrol stations are changing their, changing their business model too, of course. Yep. They're thinking about this. And, and we know at many of those stations that uh, a lot of the income comes from what's in the shop and what's in the cafe there. Yeah. Uh, so, again, smart business people are thinking about this yep. very much. Um, but there's no question that in, in rural and regional areas such as this, we are thinking about this and how we can, uh, again, capitalise on what's a great big new opportunity for yeah, us. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. All right, shall All right, we head, head back? Yeah, it's so nice up here. It is it beautiful. Is nice, yeah. isn't it? Oh, it's just gorgeous. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Do you want a photo, Helen, of yourself? Yeah, and let's the do two that. of you in front of the car? Yeah. Yep. You were very backlit. Hi. Here. How are you? Who is this under here? Pete. Oh, Pete. it is you, Pete. Pete. I didn't expect to see you. G'day. How are you? Good to see you. Here we are, Pete. This is Dan Blakeman and Julian. Hello. Hello. You're back. How are you? We're just, having a, a, uh, we're just doing a little drive of a Tesla. Nice. Talking about yeah, electric absolutely. vehicles oh, and, and regional tourism. And so important. Have a yarn to Pete. 
Yeah. Yeah. Good day, Pete. Good day. Nice are to meet you. Are you you're on camera. Is that all right? No, that's fine. Yeah. I'm out of your territory. Bit. I'm, I'm, no, I live in Batanga. Oh, you do. You yeah, do I wrote all the books. Yes, I do. Of course, you wrote all the books. What am I thinking? So, I often see you though yeah. in the act, at the markets. And yes, that's right. Yeah. yeah, yeah. No, I'm just in the middle of doing some fencing. So. Yeah, good man. Yeah. So, um, yeah, no, it's um, Tesla is so important, and I can't believe that they would give it a luxury car tax. Yeah. Um, I've got a friend of mine who's just driven across the Nullarbor and he said he had to log in somewhere he was the 89th car to do it. So here we are in Australia and it's almost like we're pioneering horse and buggy style. We're the 89th vehicle to cross the Nullarbor wow. plane. And that's only just a few months ago. Yeah, wow. So we should be right up there. I mean, we've lost Ford in Geelong. Um, we've lost Ford near Craggyburn. Yep. All those, it's all gone. Yep. I watched it being built when I was a little boy. Wow. You know, it's all gone. Why didn't we transition into electric vehicles? And why aren't we being like number one in the world for, you know, making something that's sustainable and, and necessary? Absolutely. And we're yep. so far behind the eight ball. And Helen is magnificent. She represents us beautifully. She is um, probably. Uh, with the, the, the previous member accepted, she's probably the best member that we could ever wish for. You yeah, know? Wow. I think um, she's doing a, a magnificent job. And yeah, go go Tesla. Yeah, and I think go fantastic. Vehicles. Let's make a Ute in in it's in, coming in Geelong. Yeah, Let's we should. It.